Hello traders, friends, and everyone on YouTube. Uh, welcome to another installment here of Trade Pro Tips. Today we're going to be covering using Fibonacci on TradingView. So TradingView.com is a fantastic charting platform that is free for everyone to sign up and use with some limitations. They have some upsells and other packages that you can subscribe for with the Pro Charts. They give you some advantages, but it's a free platform, fantastic place to get started. And we're going to add this as an enhancement package to the Trading Foundations course which for those of you that don't know it's a complete course consisting of um, three levels of eight webinars each so 24 in total 36 hours of content it's fantastic and the first eight webinars are totally free so let's get into it how to use Fibonacci on tradingview.com well I wanted to demonstrate this for you on how to use several tools and we're gonna do that by visiting tradingview.com and then making the screen large screen and for demonstration purposes, I've thrown in Facebook here. I do have to caution you. It's not a trading recommendation or any analysis that I show you does not imply any trade that you should take. But I'll show you how to do it. So on the left side here on the toolbar, you got a number of stuff that TradingView allows you to use. And it's incredible how many tools or how much tools are available to you at your disposal. On the second one here, if you hit the right arrow, it says Fib Retracement. You got a number of Fibonacci things here. We're not going to talk about the pitchfork. Uh, we're considering doing a... a entire course in Fibonacci later on but the ones we're going to cover today are the Fib retracement the trend based Fib extension and we are also going to look at a Fib time zone briefly here all right the rest of them you could fool around and figure it out uh, but we're going to cover these three to begin with so as you can see one thing you could do here that's neat with TradingView is if you look at the right you see this favorite uh, star here if you click it it adds it into your favorite bar so what we're going to do is add our trend based Fib time zone, or sorry, just a regular Fib time zone. We're going to favorite that. As you can see, we have one, two, three things favorited. If you go in here on Trading View, okay, if you right click on your chart and say Drawing Tools and hit on uh, Favorites Drawing Toolbar, look what happens, all right? I just unclicked it. But if you click on Favorites Drawing Toolbar, it's going to come up and you're going to have these favorites available to you with one click. So if you hover over it, you one click execute it and start drawing Fibonacci. Now, Fibonacci is not the first thing you ever want to do on your chart. However, for demonstration purposes, I am going to show you here starting with just Fibs. Normally, you want to go through and draw horizontal supports and resistances. With quick little tip on trading view, if you go to the level you want, hit Alt H, it'll set them for you. Um, now, we have a philosophy on how you should do this for ma maximum efficiency and optimal results. Go through the Trading Foundations course, sign up, and see that. But in terms of drawing Fibonacci, now we're not going to talk about the why, or sorry, the how of selecting it, why the numbers are there. We're just going to talk about the how. How do we draw this Fibonacci stuff? Oh, why is it so difficult? And it's really not. There are some basic concepts you have to follow, and I'm going to show you some of them. So what you want to do with Fibonacci is zoom out, first of all, to a time frame. Go as far out as possible and grab your Fibonacci retracement tool here from our favorites. All right, and from here, what we want to do is grab the low of a trend so if we look at this chart and ask ourselves where's the trend going quite obviously it's an upward trend we're getting higher highs and higher lows so if we grab the very low point of where that trend starts and extend it out to the high point you will see we have some Fibonacci numbers here that come out on board along with some coloring and shading alright well this first zone here is the retracement of 23.6 or that price point is 88.4 so it gives you both the percentage retracement of Fibonacci and the dollar level that represents. A little bit lower, we have 38.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.618, and 0 0.764, which are the ultimate and um, really the most useful Fibonacci support levels. What do they mean? It means as the price is dropping, you could expect it to find support here. For a lot more information on how to use Fibonacci, sign up for a Trading Foundations course on our website, tradeproacademy.com. Signing up as a member gives you free access to the eight courses, and one of them is solely on Fibonacci as support and resistance. Okay, so you're going to learn a lot more concepts. This is more so on how to use the tool on TradingView.com. All right, uh, one thing you I want to show you is if you right click on an actual line of the Fibonacci and go under where do you go under under format, you could actually select by checking these boxes on which levels you want to appear. Maybe all you care about is the 38.2, the 50, 61.8, and that's it. Well, you would do that, deselect them, and you can see it declutters your chart. There's three levels here that show now. But the problem with that is you have a massive gap in here. And some of those 23.8 zones 
are very important because they're initial retracement. So you definitely want to have that on your chart. But if you want to mess around with the settings, that's how you do it. You right click, you go in here, check the boxes you want, and you're good to go. You'll add back all your Fibonacci ratios. Here it is. The lines are back. All right. So that's step number one. Now, one important thing I teach trade uh, trade pro students is the concept of confluence. And confluence is defined by many levels that coincide with one another. How do you draw confluence on Fibonacci? Well, we did one Fibonacci retracement from the low to the high. Now what we got to do is draw a second one and see if there's any uh, levels that overlap or coincide with one another. So what we can do is again hit this Fibonacci thing or on the left side we can go on the menu or click it from our favorite bar, wherever you prefer. And what you want to do is scroll your eyes to the right and find the next low that occurred, which was here. And drag it all the way back up to that exact same high. Right? And what you're going to do is continue to do this over and over again. So we're going to do it one more time with Fibonacci. So I'm going to scroll our eyes, go back to the next higher low. All right, Just scroll it up to that high. And a, a, a common question that I get is, well, should we use the wick or the candle body? So if you have a candle that looks like this, should we draw the Fibonacci to the close and or to the wick at the high? A lot of people... Uh, are under the impression you just do it to the body. However, that's not true. You tr you actually draw it up until where that price occurred. It occurred all the way to this high at one point throughout that day. So I always draw it from the extremes to the low, extremes to the high, and I believe that captures price action much more accurately. Just because it didn't close up in this wick, it doesn't mean it never occurred. So always try to draw it on the extremes and the wicks when you're using Fibonacci. When you're using trend lines, you want to grab the candle bodies, and it's totally different. All right, so now we have three separate zones that we've charted out that have found previous um, lows, and we're connecting that to the current high of that trend. So look at this, one, two, three, and we can really continue to do this uh, for ages. So we can grab the next high here, uh, which falls right up here, extend that out, all right, and we just continue to do this over and over again. I'm going to do one more for demonstration purposes, and then we'll call that the end of that. But you'd want to do this all the way until you reach this retracement here. And what you're getting now is a study of confluence. Now, if you look at these levels, forget about all these price points at the left side, look at the right and find a place where lines coincide. Look at this. This level here is a key level. And what is it? It's um, 94.65. All right, it happens to be the 23 of one line and the 23 of another or the 38 of another and they come in together and block into a chunk and that you could call that $95. $94.65, you might as well call it 95 because 95 is also a nice even and equal number. That's going to help you there. All right, so when you draw that, guess what? The next expectation is if Facebook price starts to tumble or goes into a retracement mode, support can be found at 95 based on strong confluent zones from Fibonacci as well as its previous high in the price action. Now, where are other levels? Well, this level right here looks fantastic as well. All right, and the reason this level is so strong is you've got two lines that are confluencing. You've got two previous highs that broke out and then acted as support. That's a great level as well. All right, so that's how you begin to draw your Fibonacci. So what I would do is I'd plot this line, this line in here so far, this one, this one, and anywhere where you see two lines in close proximity. And then what I would proceed to do is draw these horizontal levels. How do you do that? Well, you go in here, hover over it, Alt H draws a horizontal line on the chart for you. Alt H. Okay, and then go back here. All right, and then go to Alt H and repeat this exercise. Now I'm going to show you something interesting. This clutters up your chart. With TradingView, you can actually save templates, which helps if you want to keep this uh, visual here for yourself. But I don't like to do that. What I want to do is remove all of these Fibonacci's. All right, so you can actually click on them and then hit delete to uh, expedite this process. And what you're left with is these horizontal lines that represent Fibonacci confluence. I like to make mine orange just because, I don't know, I've been doing that for ages, and highlight them and also dash them. That's just my little way of doing things. You don't got to adopt that, but make your own way. And that's called a confluent zone. If you ever see this on my chart, it means there's a lot of Fibonacci confluence. Now it's nice and clean, and you have a zone at which the price is expected to pause on the way down. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that part. One more thing I wanted to show you is a Fibonacci extension. Now, it's very important that you know an extension is only valid. Okay, a Fibonacci extension is only valid when you are drawing it in a in a occurrence where there was actually a completed Fibonacci retracement first. So what do you do? You have to test this uh, thesis when you're drawing these. I'll give you an example. From the low here, if you grab it and 
extended to the high. This is a nice Fibonacci trend that we've drawn, low to high. How far did it retrace? It hit the 23.6, and it kind of sort of almost touched the 38 before it turned. Okay, so is this an accurate or precise Fibonacci retracement? Absolutely. All right, it stalled at the 23 temporarily. It bounced around there. That was a nice midpoint for price action that it took off from that level. So that was a good support zone. So what you can now do is delete this Fibonacci and use another tool on here. So you go on the right, it is called the Fibonacci trend-based Fib extension. Okay, trend-based Fib extension. And what you want to do is click this tool and now it's a three click instead of two. So you click the low of that trend, the high of it, and then swing it to the low point of where that retracement occurred. So if I extend it out, I want to show you what that looks like. There it is. All right. So hitting this point here allows you the A point to B point extension, C point retracement, and how far out is it actually retracing. All it essentially does is take this. If you actually took a retracement from point A to point B on the FIBS, inverted it, and started it from this point, you would get the exact same levels. That's essentially the, the nature of this exercise. So what you could begin to see here now is there's going to be some resistance at this 0 0.5 extension, which you could see one, two, three, four, five different price points find resistances there. And wow, wasn't that really powerful? Look at this, the next one, 61.8. Look at this, one, two, three, four, five months and months later, almost a year later, actually. In fact, it is a year later. These Fibonacci extensions are still valid. And then you see a takeoff to 1.0 and we're seeing some reaction here. It gapped right above the 1.0 and it looks like it's, it's turning. We're finding some resistance in Facebook. That's a really neat tool. Extensions are really helpful to help you project out a trend on which you might not have price. And which, which price point is that? Well, right now on Facebook. Let's say you ask yourself, how high is Facebook going to go considering it's at an all-time high? Well, we got to find a recent trend that made a full retracement before it continued higher. And look at it right here. You want to always project off the previous trend that just took place for the short term. If you're looking for long term projections, grab a longer term trend. All right, keep that in context. So here we go. We see that this completed the 50% retracement almost perfectly, even hit 61.8 on the wick. The candle closed at 57. Super strong retracement on this trend. So what we could do is extend on this basis. We could grab our Fibonacci extension now. Okay, grab this low, plot out the high and find the retracement on the wick at the bottom. And what you could now do is delete the previous fib, zoom in, and ask yourself the following question. Where will it go? Well, 1.0 extensions at 116. So the upside here remains to be $116. 1.618, which is the ultimate retracement, uh, is really hit up until 144. Now, you can't just presume that you're going to buy now and hold until it hits there because along the way, you can do a whole bunch of other stuff. But you will see even months up to years later it'll hit a zone and it'll flat and it'll fail and you'll say hey why did it fail there and when you do your analysis going back in time you'll see wow that was a fib extension so there's two tools fibonacci retracement fibonacci extension on trading view the last one i'm going to briefly show you here is the fib time zone and the fibonacci time zone is quite a controversial tool it works sometimes but it's one of those things that if you really play around with it and tweak it a lot it'll obviously work all right because you're you're pretty much manipulating the system. The way you want to do it is make sure you grab your low, your high, and your retracements and respect those levels. Don't say, oh, well, you know, here's a low. I could maybe slot it down here just to make it work. What you want to do is respect the levels, and if it coincides, great. If it's not a helpful tool, we have others as well, and you can see that in the Foundations course. So we've agreed that was a good retracement. If we grab this low here on Facebook and plot it out to the high, these time zones are basically giving us time projections on which the trend will find resistance horizontally. This is a very important concept because very few things give us time or horizontal resistance levels. That's essentially like grabbing this scale, okay, with the retracements and tilting it this way, all right, 90 degrees, and then laying it on its head. And then you'll see the same thing pretty much. These are time zones. And look how nicely it worked on this one. It went through here, it was bearish, sort of, kind of, hit here, went sideways, it rallied, it got really close to this time extension and then dropped. As you can see, they're not perfect. All right, guys, that's the one downside of these time zones. You can see they have the Fibonacci ratios applied as they grow out, um, but it's a tool that you could use. All right, and what you're doing here is mapping a low to a high, and then you can find out what effect 
that has on Fibonacci. These time zones, I don't use as much. Uh, people swear by them. Personally, I don't use them as often, but if you do, hey, that's great. I just showed you how to use them. Uh, Fibonacci, does it work on time frames? It works on any time frame. You can literally go on the 15 minute. Let me just reset the zoom here on this chart. Okay, here we go. You go on a 15 minute chart of Facebook and do the absolute same thing. All right, maybe we're observing this trend here on the 15 minute, saying, so, you know, it's going up. We want to swing trade this guy or day trade it, be a little bit more aggressive. Well, guess what? It works. We grab the low see where the high is where it failed and as we're maybe in here and the char chart price is dropping you're saying all right I'm gonna catch this thing if it falls at 101.67 I'm gonna buy it well guess what it hits the first retracement zone there's previous resistance here all right we see a candle that pretty much fills the other candle all right so it's a really tweezer bottom pattern and a potential head and shoulders even however you look at it I mean probably not you don't want to be doing head and shoulders on 15 minutes that look like this you want them to be a little bit more well-defined traditionally that, that'd be a great head and shoulders um, but look and then they caught the support they went up and the really the basis on doing this in a smaller time frame or a 15 minute or intraday is you get to catch these swings and Fibonacci is one of the oldest most reliable most predictable patterns out there that you could use and that's how you do it on trading view you could apply that on your charts it's free it's a phenomenal tool and I strongly encourage you to go out there and check it out add it to your favorites toolbar keep on using it and enjoying it you guys have yourselves a fantastic day i wish you the very best in your trading careers and endeavors and feel free to check out our website lots of content like this and literally 45 50 60 actually now hours plus of content and growing on a weekly basis all available for you guys have a fantastic day all the best if you want to reach out to us we're here to support you and we wish you the very best take care guys goodbye